okay, we know the problem. We're in a piston and cylinder with adiabatic walls and there's nitrogen at 25 degrees centigrade. The piston is loaded down with weights so that the in-cylinder pressure is 30 atmospheres. In an instant, we remove the weights of the piston and the nitrogen with molar heat capacity, CVM, equal to 4.95 calories per mole Kelvin, expands to 10 atmospheres. What is the final temperature of the nitrogen, assuming that it behaves as an ideal gas? As always, we start by writing down what we have. Uh, we have T1 equals 25 degrees Celsius. We have P1 equals 30 atmospheres. We'll see if we need to change units in a minute. We have CVM, which is for both things, that's why I left space here, is 4.95 calories per mole Kelvin. And we have P2 equals 10 atmospheres and we are looking for T2. This is a simpler problem than the one before. It is the opposite order. That is, we're starting with it, a piston weighted down and then the piston is released. So we're in this situation and here we have 30 atmospheres and here we have 10 atmospheres. Now, again, both of these are in equilibrium at the time. So the external pressure here is also 10 atmospheres. That's key. And of course, because the volume increases, we expect the temperature to go down. Okay, so adiabatic gives us Q equal to zero. So that gives us delta U equal to W, and W is minus P delta V, and this is P external. So here, delta U, what formula do we have that does CVM and T's? It's N CVM delta T, so that's N times CVM T2 minus T1. We'll hope that the N's cancel out since we have no N's here. And then we have W equal to minus P external delta V. So that's P external is P2. That's going to be key. P2 times V2 minus V1. We have ideal gas. So we get minus P2 NR T2 over P2 minus NRT1 over P1, and we are left with minus, P2's cancel, so minus NRT2 plus NRT1 times P2 over P1. So we need to set this equal to this, and yes, indeed, the ends cancel. We have everything else except T2. So let's go for it. So we have uh, CVM times T2 minus CVM times T1 equals minus RT2 plus RT1 times P2 over P1. So let's put the T2s on this side. So T2, we have CVM plus R. And then T1 is on the other side. We have CVM plus R. We took out T1, so times P2 over P1. So now we have T2 is equal to T1 times this divided by this, and all we have to do is be very careful of our units. T2 equals, and so we need T1 is 298 Kelvin, and then we have CV1, so that's 4.95 calories, times 4.19 calories per joule, so this is now joules per mole Kelvin, plus 
8.314 joules per mole Kelvin times 10 atmospheres. Why am I not fixing the atmospheres? Why? Because they're going to cancel right here in front of us. So we don't have to change them into anything. Divided by this part right here, but without the 1030. So 4.95 times 4.19 joules per mole Kelvin plus 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And all our joules per mole Kelvin cancel, right? And we're left with Kelvin, like we need to be. So what we actually have is this number plus this number times one third over this number plus that number, but we'll just do it on a calculator. So 298 times, and then we'll do the top parenthesis. 4.95 times 4.19 plus 8.314 times 10 divided by 30. We're expecting less than 298 divided by parenthesis 4.95 times 4.19. 0.19 plus 8.314. Let's check it. So 298, 4.95 times 4.19, same thing here, plus 8.314, and then this one is times 10 over 30. We expect to get something less than 298. 241 looks good. So 241.2. When we release it, the temperature should go down. So now all we need to do is get this into Celsius. So we need 241.2 minus 273. So minus 273 minus 31.8 degrees Celsius. Minus 31.8 degrees Celsius. And that is our answer.